Hello everyone, it is Bridget here. I'm in Bridget's kitchen hoping that you are having an absolutely wonderful day today. Thank you so much for joining me here in my kitchen. It is a pretty cool little cooking class that we are doing today and what we're actually going to focus on is something that's not just plant-based, which is kind of the cool buzzwords right now. Everyone's talking about plant-based food. This is actually a vegan recipe. Now if you have never had vegan food before, or if you see vegan on a menu and you just go, I'm not going there, you know, I like to eat my meat, please, please give this a try. You will not be disappointed. In fact, this particular recipe, which I'm doing, which is, I call it a vegan pulled pork because it has the consistency and the flavor of pulled pork or even pulled chicken, but it is a vegan dish. There's no animal products involved in this, this recipe whatsoever. And when I do it live, in my book launches and cooking classes, people who are not normally sort of vegan inclined, you know, they're sort of like, oh, I don't go anywhere near that vegan food. They just think it is phenomenal. So I do suggest that you watch this video and give it a bit of a try because it is one of those recipes that's really gonna excite you. It's really going to interest you. You know, it's gonna be something completely different if you've never tried it before, completely different, but oh, so familiar and taste and texture and comfort and it just makes you feel good to eat it and when food makes you feel good to eat it when food regardless of, of, of the fact that it's vegan or it's plant-based or it's vegetarian or it's gluten-free or if it's sugar-free if it's dairy-free if food makes you feel good in your soul it is a good thing. So thank you to everyone who's joined me today. I have Annie coming at us from Tassie. Hi Annie, hope you're well. Lovely to see you. Also to Tracy who's joining us. Please let us know where you're coming from. Say hi, I'm coming from Sydney. Bridget's Kitchen today, Bridget's Kitchen, which is very exciting. We are here for the next couple of weeks, me and Mahi, working really hard for you guys, creating lots of amazing, exciting recipes that I'm gonna be sharing on Bridget's Kitchen over the next couple of weeks as well. So let me know, let me know. I know, Janine, pulled pork is pulled pork. It is a, it is a quasi pulled pork. It has the texture and the flavor of pork, but it is vegan and it's a bit of a sneaky little trick. So don't, don't turn it down until you've tried it. It's one of the things I always say to my kids. I say, Hey, how do you know you don't like it if you've never tried it? Remember that it's really important that we expand our minds and we expand our diet because if you're watching me because you want to make positive changes in your diet, then you need to make positive changes in how you think up here first. How you think up here first and give things a go is so important. So today I want you guys to have really open minds, really, really open minds about what we're doing and we are doing a, um, a vegan style pulled pork. So it has a taste and the texture the familiarity, the comfort, but guess what? It is completely vegan. Right, so we're gonna be doing that. But before we get into that, the reason I'm doing a plant-based recipe today for you guys is because um, I'm so incredibly happy and excited to announce that my uh, latest e-cookbook, which is Bridget's Healthy Veggies, so it is 50 plant-based, vegetarian, and vegan recipes is now available. It has officially been launched right here, right now. So BridgetsHealthyVeggies.com is where you can go and purchase it. Mahi is gonna throw up a link for anyone who wants it. Remember it's 50, 50 as in 5-0, plant-based, vegan and vegetarian recipes. Now, um, if you um, already eat that way, ta-da! I made this for you and I definitely made it because people were always asking me for it as well. And hi to Maria! Hello, I love Hanoma Bay, Oahu, beautiful, aloha, aloha and mahalo for joining us today, Maria, all the way from Hanoma Bay. If no one's ever been to Hanoma Bay, if you haven't been, it is phenomenal. Right there at the very end of Hawaii Kai, you have Port Lock on one side, then you have Hanoma Bay over the edge, and then you have, um, what's the mountain we climbed up, Mahi? Coco Head. Oh, the hike up Coco Head. Maria, the hike up Coco Head. I have done it. I was stung a couple times by bees, but I did do it, just so you know. So thank you for joining us all the way. Aloha, aloha from Hawaii. But yes, we're doing this recipe to celebrate the fact that we've launched this new e-cookbook, which is my 50 healthy vegetable recipes, including, here is a table of contents that I've printed out so you guys know the type of recipes you'll be getting if you um, get this e-book. Um, I have my Penang style red 
curry. So it's a vegetarian red curry and it is phenomenal. It tastes so good. You literally, you want to lick the plate. It's one of those ones. I also have in there my cauliflower mac and cheese. I teach you guys how to make the most ideal white sauce, like a bechamel sauce. You will just love this recipe so much and it's so easy to do as well. Um, we have my almond nut sauce, which is my version of a peanut satay sauce. Because peanuts are not good for us, let's be honest. Peanuts are not something we need to have in our diet. They're really, really bad for our health. I've replaced the peanuts and made a really interesting and delicious almond nut sauce. There are sweet corn fritters in there, organic sweet corn fritters. I have an Indonesian style gadu gadu salad. If anyone's ever had that before, you know it is phenomenal. It is so beautiful. There is hemp milk in there. I have sticky tofu in there. There is a recipe that we're doing today is also in there, which is our, our vegan style pool pork, um, roasted tomato sauce, we've got falafel, different types of soups in there for when the wind, weather gets a bit cooler. I also have my favourite, Nanny's pickled vegetables, which I love to bits, absolutely love to bits. They go into my gut healing bowls. A couple different types of vegetarian sausages are in there. We also do broccoli sushi. Um, and one of the things that I really, really love in here, that I have put in here, um, is my banana chickpea curry that is in there as well so lots of really exciting new things there is desserts as well so i do the carrot cupcakes caramelized apple full banana nice cream so you can eat ice cream that's dairy free sugar free and gluten free we also have my um my coconut yogurt fat free veggie chips so you can actually have your snack food in there as well there's garlic naan there's another recipe i call hot love that's in there and then of course all the foundation recipes that you guys are so that you guys need as well like the tomato sauce look at the cowboy spice like the sticky sauce the kombu the sweet soy sauce all those things are in there 50 there's actually 51 recipes if i'd be completely honest in that ebook it is now ready um, for you guys to, to grab and take and love and enjoy bridgetshealthyveggies.com that is ready to go to celebrate we're gonna make a plant-based vegan recipe today like i said if you've been to one of my one of my recent cooking classes that i've done you would have had this in real time i would have cooked it for you now i'm going to cook for all of you guys i just wish i could share that with you guys as well but eating wise but at least you get to see the process that's behind it and it's simple because you guys know me my recipes are simple they're chef quality and simple so here we go come on down to my bench and i will show you what we're doing today so what I have here on my bench here, I have a couple of cans as you can see. And um, these cans are what we're using as the alternative to pork or chicken, which we normally would pull. So you get that lovely strands, you know, you want to, you're after those lovely long fibers. So what I'm using here is what is known as jackfruit. Now you can see it on the label there. It is a big, really big fibrous fruit very very popular in Asian cuisine in fact I got this particular can from my Asian supermarket now when you are buying your jackfruit what you are looking for is you're looking for jackfruit that's in brine so not in, not a sweet version you're just looking for a brine version so you basically just got the jackfruit in there and a little bit of um, a briny water so um, this particular can I got from the Asian supermarket but this one here which is another version I'm sorry I know it's back to front this is an organic um, jackfruit it's quite a young one so it was quite tender and this one actually comes from a company called Cirrus Organics which is a New Zealand based very very popular organics company they, they have um, they provide food to new sorry products to New Zealand and Australia um, Cirrus here um, quite a nice one I bought that from a normal supermarket so just your normal Woolworths it is a little bit more expensive than this one here but if you struggle to find this you can pick this up from a really good supermarket IGA something like that and you're looking for jackfruit and brine so once you've got your jackfruit um, what is it remember it's a tropical plant used extensively in Asian cooking it is extremely low in calories like so incredibly low in calories one portion of, of this is like 40 calories it is extremely low in calories it's got no fat it's got zero sugar this is incredibly good for us as well and it's such a nice alternative if you want to lead more of a plant-based diet because we know that we need to move away from eating so much animal products and start to include more plants in our diet this is a really nice way to do it because yes you are getting the goodness from this particular plant and not only is this really good for us it's actually really sustainable as well so one tree one tree one jackfruit tree can produce two to three tons of fruit 
two to three tons with very little maintenance. So it's not like it's, it's heavy in water and, and requiring lots of, um, you know, lots of activity to make these things grow. One tree will produce two to three tons of fruit. So it's really sustainable as well. So I've got my jackfruit, as you can see, you're either looking for one from your Asian supermarket or in your supermarket, Cirrus Organics does it, which is fabulous. And when you empty the can, what you have coming out of your can will look something like that. So it kind of, um, well, I suppose, what does it look like? It looks like if you've, if you've ever eaten taro before, it kind of looks like that, but it is a fruit. And also the other thing to bear in mind, just in case you, you're questioning it, is um, when it comes to this particular fruit, I know there is another very popular um, fruit that you may be aware of that has that real stinky, stinky smell, the durian, the one that's really potent. This is not it. This has no smell. In fact, this is this. I like to refer to this as being flavorless, but it is the perfect vehicle for adding flavors too. So you're not. I'm not giving you a recipe for durian, which is the one that's got a really distinct, almost stinky feet, stinky cheese decay smell. This is not it. This smells like nothing. This is just as you see it right now. There is zero smell. There is almost zero flavor. Hence why it works as a really good vehicle. So when it comes to our jackfruit, what you want to do is you want to drain all the water from the can and then just taking up the actual pieces of fruit itself, the brined fruit, you want to start to pull it, so to speak. Here's some I've done earlier. That's what it looks like when I pull it. And all I need to do to pull it is just squeeze out some of the excess moisture. Clean hands, of course, clean hands. And then you just want to break it up into pieces. And what you, will happen, what you'll see, and yes, this is a little bit hands-on, as you can see, you do, it does require you to do a little bit of this pulling. And what you'll see, that's the hard bit, I'll chop that up, is you're getting what looks like a very similar texture, look, fibrous look, is what you would get if you're doing pulled chicken or pulled pork. So that's the first thing that we want to do, is we want to pull it. So give it a bit of a squeeze, and then just using clean hands, you want to create or separate those fibers. So you have that kind of texture that is so familiar if you're a lover of pulled chicken or pulled pork. So once again, I'll do it, do it one more time so you guys can see. Just like, it's so easy, right? Ooh, it comes apart in your hands. And then taking up, you've got these hard little bits here, like I have. The best way to deal with them is just to chop them through roughly with a knife. They don't require too much effort to chop through. They're really, really tender, really, really soft. And as I was saying, remember what this is. When it comes to the jackfruit, this is the vehicle of amazing, delicious, and wonderful flavors that we're gonna add to it to create this really amazing taste sensation. So that's the jackfruit done, pulled, you know, on its own, tastes pretty boring. So it's now our opportunity to add those wonderful flavors. So the flavors that I have, the first thing I'm gonna do is just take up a little roasting tray. There's my little roasting tray there. I'm gonna grab some baking paper, which is down here. Get a baking paper. The reason I'm adding baking paper to the tray, the reason I'm adding baking paper, is just because it's easy to clean up. I don't, I don't like doing dishes, but I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan at all. So um, this is a nice way to make sure that we have an easy clean system once we're done. So baking paper goes in. The next thing we can do is just add the jackfruit straight into there, because we are going to be popping this into the oven. So as I was saying, this recipe, if you want the, um, the quantities, is available via that new ebook that we just released, BridgetsHealthyVeggies.com, um, plus 49 other amazing plant-based recipes. That is all in there but I'll give you guys the basic technique here today, here today. So our jackfruit is in there. By the way, this is just one can. I think in the recipe it calls for two cans, so you'll be doubling up. And that can of jackfruit that I showed you from my Asian supermarket cost me $1.97. So if you're looking at this purely from budget perspective, it is incredibly um, budget friendly when it comes to this jackfruit. So that's just one can in there. That's probably got three portions at least in there, two to three, maybe even four portions of jackfruits in there. So once that's in, we continue to add those wonderful flavors. And the next flavor I'm going to add, bring my trolley closer to me. Oh, got my 
trolley next to me. But if you can't see, I've just got a trolley full of food there. <laughs> Rolled it next to me. The next flavor I'm going to add is just a little bit of um, onion. You can use red onion. You can use white onion. Completely up to you. But what you want to do is you want to cut it nice and small. So this cut that I'm doing is called a brunoise or a fine dice. So a brunoise or fine dice goes in there. You can, if you don't want to cut your onions, because onions offend you, like my onions, onion offends me as well, but these onions I actually pre-peeled like yesterday, so hence why I'm not crying. Normally I'd be bawling my eyes out. But if you're doing your onions, onions straight from scratch, just pop it into your little machine, blend it really quickly in there, absolutely fine. But my onion, as I said, I pre-peeled them uh, yesterday, so they're not making me cry. My makeup is intact. <laughs> My chefliness is intact because I'm not, I'm not boiling my eyes out. So, fine dice. You can't or don't want to cut it by hand, throw it in your little food processor. And the onion just goes straight into the roast, little roasting tray with the jackfruit. So that's one wonderful flavor we have on there. Let's also um, be very mindful that we have all these other things sitting in our fridge waiting to be added to flavor. This here is just my chopped ginger finely chopped ginger so i'm going to add a bit of that in look if it's i think it's about a tablespoon in the recipe if you like ginger add some more like seriously if you don't like ginger add less you know this is flavor enhancers yes it's good for our bodies too but let's just say for whatever reason you're not a ginger person and you're not a garlic person just don't add as much as me i think like i said in the recipe it calls for like a tablespoon of chop, finely chopped ginger and garlic so up to you guys what you want to do there i'm not fussy because at the end of the day you're eating it not me so <laughs> i'm giving you the basic yes i've got a question i believe and then these are asking can you use fresh jackfruit can i use fresh jackfruit uh, not really, um, Nanita, because it needs to be pulled. So it needs to be either brined or um, able to be separated. So this is one of the recipes. If you if you have access to fresh jackfruit, you will probably have to cook it first, just so you get the texture that we have here. Um, so not to my knowledge can you use fresh, only because it will behave quite differently to the already brined one. But you know what, you need to please give it a try if you have access to fresh jackfruit. Um, it's not as easily sourced for us. And I must admit the canned variety is quite convenient for us, we can't source it. So, but if you can try it and let us know, that would be amazing. So ginger and garlic is now mixed in. Let's also add in just a little bit of, um, a little bit of salt. I'm using just a natural sea salt there. We're also gonna add in one of my favorites, a little bit of sticky sauce goes in there as well. Of course, sticky sauce has, you know, tamari and lime juice, you know, and apple for sweetness. So it's a really nice addition to, um, to our jackfruit. It is really, really nice. And it's gonna help to give the sensation of um, pulled pork or pulled barbecue food here. So the sticky sauce gets mixed in. I also have um, a little bit of cowboy spice blend. So this is my own personal spice blend that I um, suggest that you guys all try. It is made up of three spices basically. Cinnamon, uh, cumin and garam masala and it is phenomenal. It kind of has that a little bit of a smokiness to it. And um, the reason I called it cowboy spice is because I figure that this is what cowboys would love to have in their little rack sack attached to their horse as they're draw, you know, they're, they're driving cattle across the prairie. This is what they'd like to have to complete all their meats or their beans or whatever it is that they're eating. You've got that little bit of cowboy spice. So that goes in there. I also want to help to balance these flavors because right now we've got this kind of the smokiness from the cowboy spice. We you know we've got the, the, the almost you know, non-existent flavor of the jackfruit, which acts as, a, acts as the vehicle to all these wonderful ginger and garlic and onion and sticky sauce and of course cowboy spice. But I want to balance those flavors as well. So in order to balance it, oh, I don't have it here. Oh, I'm gonna have to go with this. I would normally, <laughs> I would normally put in some apple puree, pure apple puree. But I just realized by looking at 
my my bits and pieces that I don't actually have any so I'm gonna go second I'm gonna go another way around this I'm still gonna add some apple but instead of adding um, apple puree I'm actually going to add in grated apple now all I need to do is find my grater which is going to be an interesting I'm gonna look in every cup I have bear with me while I find my grater oh yes only in the second cupboard I looked in that's pretty exciting so I'm not even gonna bother to peel that I'm just literally gonna go straight in and I'm gonna grate the apple straight into there and um, oh actually I'm gonna go but I'm not gonna go as fine as that I'm gonna go a little bit thicker so we've actually got the apple coming out so to scrape the apple straight in I'm grating in one apple I think in the recipe there's about about 60 mils or something of apple puree but this is really nice little um, show for you guys that you don't need to have ingredients in exactly the way shape or form provided we're putting a bit of apple in there which means we're balancing out the sweetness it is going to be absolutely fine and grated apple is such a wonderful once again a lovely little texture that we're going to be adding onto it so grate your apple it's only a small apple quite a small one and I am using a green apple because green apple is lovely and tart so that's why I like to use green apples in cooking. They just have a little bit more substance to them as opposed to just tasting sweet. So green apple is in there. Don't even have to peel it. Just straight in, scrape out all the apple. Don't want to waste any. And the very last thing I'm going to add in this just to give us a little bit of gravy, a little bit of juice, you know, a little bit of moisture, not too much, is what I have in here which is my kombu water or my kombu stock so I'm going to add a little bit of kombu and that's just going to help like I said to give moisture and create a little bit of a gravy and that is pretty much it in terms of adding flavor but there is so much happening in this now I mean I'm tempted to want to eat it on its own but no it does actually improve even though it looks pretty delicious right now that looks pretty delicious it does actually improve with a bit of cooking so I have my oven set on 180 degrees which is 350 degrees Fahrenheit we are now going to pop that in the oven and that is going to cook in the oven for around about 30 minutes about 30 minutes in there so pop that in now while that's in the oven I'm going to prepare the accompaniments and it's completely up to you how you now serve your jackfruit or your your vegan pulled pork or your pulled jackfruit whatever you want to call it completely up to you how you serve it um, for some people they like to serve it like on a big bed of coleslaw like a little coleslaw salad serve it like that um, I also serve mine on psyllium husk bread rolls which the recipe is in here and my psyllium husk bread rolls are amazing because not only are they extremely high in dietary fiber so if you want to add a bit of fit more fiber to your diet I'm just trying to find them they are in the back of the book um, they also once again act as this absolutely wonderful vehicle for doing putting the actual pulled jackfruit in the middle of them and having them as a beautiful sandwich like a roll they are delicious so I would suggest you serve them with a psyllium husk bread roll you could serve them with a coleslaw you could serve it with um, broccoli rice or cauliflower rice or just even a big salad on the side would be amazing but the way I'm going to teach you guys today is a little bit like almost going next level and we're going to serve them very similar flavors to Mexican nachos or Mexican tacos so we're going to do like a Mexican style addition to our jackfruit so when we're doing a Mexican style addition the first thing you need to think about is that is always a gorgeous salsa available so we're gonna make a very quick very simple tomato salsa like nothing to even nothing even to uh, concern ourselves with when it comes to how quick and easy this is to make so I'm cutting my tomato into four because I'm actually gonna remove those seeds you don't want seeds in your in your um, salsa not ideal the texture's not good all we want in our salsa is actually that fleshy part of the skin there just makes for a salsa that doesn't taste watery and you're just getting a really good um, full exposure to that wonderful tomato flesh so the best way to do it is just put your knife in under and just rock it along and you just lift with that 
wonderful bit of flesh. The skins you could keep for, um, the seeds you could keep for tomato sauce. If you make my ro roasted tomato sauce, completely up to you. But definitely for salsa, we just want the flesh. So once again, taking that sharp knife, we're just going to slice through and make again that very small dice or that brunoise shape from the tomatoes. My tomato is very, very ripe, by the way. It is very ripe. So even though it's extremely ripe, I'm able to cut through it because I yes I have removed all those real fleshy pulpy seeds but the other reason I'm able to cut through it is I've got a nice sharp knife as well so a sharp, sharp knife definitely helps if you are struggling with your knife I would definitely suggest and I think I showed you guys this oh where is it it's not here give me a second I'm gonna go grab it it's important you need to see it if you want to just purchase an, a sharp knife that's not going to cost an arm and a leg, you can buy one of these. This is called a paring knife. It's by a company called um, Victorinox. They also do Swiss Army knives and stuff like that. Uh, so, sorry, Victorinox, German. Um, no, these guys are Swiss. I believe they're Swiss. You can buy one of these paring knives, which is super, super sharp, from like a chef store or King of Knives or one of those places for about between six to ten dollars. You can buy one of these and they are extremely sharp. Just in case you don't have a big chef's knife, if you've got these little paring knives, which I always have, these little paring knives here, you'll always have access to a sharp knife. So just a little just a little tip there when it comes to knife buying. So tomatoes are done. Here's some I prepared earlier. This is we're making a nice big salsa today. Tomatoes go into our little bowl. Like I said if it's ripe it's fine. If they're if they're quite firm that's okay as well. You guys just decide how you like your tomatoes. I do like mine quite ripe. I like the sweetness of a really ripe tomato. Naturally sweetened, of course. Remember, tomato is a fruit. Even though we like to think it's a vegetable, it's got seeds, so it's actually a fruit. I know, it's actually a fruit. Um, so that's hence why we get that natural sweetness. So tomatoes are there. Let's once again go back to that wonderful, wonderful bit of onion. So red onion is nice for salsa just because it looks good but you know you can also add you can also use white onion you don't have to use red onion but I definitely definitely love the look so once again very small dice so if you if you're struggling with the small dice and the onion throw it into your food processor no problem so onion goes in there so already we just have created quite a delicious quite a delicious looking looking mixture of just tomato and onion and because my onion's quite small, I'm going to add just a little bit more of that onion. You can go in. And there, lovely, small, lovely, lovely, lovely small dice. So, if you want to, as well, you can add just a little bit of um, chopped garlic. And I mean a little bit. I'm only going to add, like, probably not even half a teaspoon of chopped garlic in there. Like I said, up to you. Um, the other thing I'm going to add is a little bit of salt just a pinch of salt not too much I'm gonna add just a little bit of finely ground or finely milled black pepper salsa freshness is everything so because freshness is everything I have my fresh herbs here and um, I'm a little bit low on herbs so I'm actually I would normally add um, oh actually I've got some I would normally add coriander because coriander tomato is like the perfect flavor mix. So, um, yes, I'm going to add coriander. That's just the stalks of the coriander, which I'm going to finely chop. But I've also got some mint in here. So I was going to add mint. I'm down to my last um, herbs. I need to go and buy some more. I used them all over the weekend because we, we did the Canberra cooking class and book launch. And I used all my herbs up. So I need to go buy some more. So taking that little bit of coriander, just the stalks. I'm just going to very finely chop through them. Probably want to add about a tablespoon worth of those wonderful coriander stalks. Beautiful! So happy! There you go, had coriander after all. So that goes in and then you could get a squeeze of lemon juice, a squeeze of lime juice and as I was saying I ran out of all my vegetables because I haven't been to the shops yet. I'm actually going to go and do something a little bit different. I'm still going to be adding acid but I'm going to be adding acid in the form of my pickled onions because there's a good amount of flavour in there. If you don't have pickled onions and you don't have um, limes, fresh limes, especially if you're in New Zealand because it's like $70 a kilo for limes, or you don't have fresh lemons, 
if you don't have pickles, you can also just add your apple cider vinegar, just a pinch. We just want the acid to go through and to help to flavor, help to flavor our little salsa there and give it a little bit of excitement. So guess what works? I know, how crazy is that? You know, pickles are the gift that keep on giving. You can even use it in the replace of lemons or lime juice. Yes, it's just beautiful. So, salsa is looking good. Remember, the key to a good salsa is that everything is done fresh. Freshly done, so you have that wonderful texture from your salsa there. Everything is lovely and fresh. So, salsa's done. The last thing I want to I do while our jackfruit cooks is I want to create the avocado portion. So you think guacamole, or you just think avocado in itself. I'm going to be just making a very quick avocado dip with this. Like a, like a smooth, um, I suppose you could call it a smooth guacamole. So just cutting our avocado in half, hoping it's lovely and fresh. It feels pretty good. It feels pretty green. Have a little look. Yeah, that's good. That's wonderful. So straight into my little food processor, I'm going to be putting the avocado. And by the way, I have a recipe for my avocado in basil dip, which is really good, obviously, with this, but it's also amazingly good if you're serving it with crackers or you're dipping raw vegetables into it. It is wonderful. Or you're putting it with, with on bread. It is phenomenal. That is in the new ebook as well, Bridget's Healthy Veggies. That is also one of the recipes in there, and it's pretty good. So I've got avocado in there. Remember, I've got no lemon juice <laughs> or lime juice because I haven't been to the store. So, instead of that, I'm going to go back and add a little bit of my pickle juice to it. Remember pickle juice? The gift that keeps on giving. And the pickles that I'm using today is actually my, um, as you can see, my cucumber pickles as my juice. So that goes in there. That's going to help to keep the avocado from going brown, which is really important. Let's go back and add in a little bit of flavor, a little bit of salt. Give it a bit of um, freshly milled black pepper. Goes in there as well. Bit of flavor, bit of wonderful flavor. And then I'm also just gonna add in, just because they were there and they were looking at me, just a little bit of spring onion. Why not? You don't have to put onion in here. You could add garlic if you wanted to, or ginger. But I'm just gonna put just a bit of the whites of the onion and go in there. I had no intention of doing that. I just decided that two seconds ago. So you don't have to put spring onion in. You do not have to put spring onion in. Remember, it's really important. Oh, last thing. Got to have some fresh herb in there. I'm going to be adding mint because we all know that mint is lovely and mint goes so incredibly well with avocado. Just so well. And it's a, it's a good couple of tablespoons of mint. Fresh mint that I just chopped straight off it. Straight in there, beautiful, absolutely like stunning. The, the smell that's coming off this now, oh, it's exceptional, it is exceptional. All right, lid goes on, come on lid, here we go. And we're gonna give it a quick little pulverize. You can do this by hand, you don't have to use a machine. I'm just being a bit lazy today. Now if you were doing it by hand, just make sure that you um, you don't just roughly chop your ingredients. You actually give it a really good going over with the knife because you don't have the um, you know the, the ease of, of the blade and the blender doing all the work for you. So you will need to give it a bit of a chop, but it doesn't have to be smooth. I love this kind of chunkiness it has to it. Gorgeous. You could add chili to that if you wanted to as well. Mm. Oh yeah. Mmm, tasting good. Oh, it's tasting good. I'm just going to add a little bit more of this because I like it to be a little bit balanced with that little bit of sourness. So a little bit more pickle juice. Why it's really important that we taste our food so you know what's going on. So a bit of that pickle, a bit of that salt. One more little blend. All right. Yay. Woohoo. Good. Now the thing about this. If you are making anything with avocado, 
it will not last that long once you've made it so 24 hours maximum in the fridge this along with that gorgeous salsa are things that you really want to do fresh when it comes to Mexican style food is fresh as best guacamole or avocado salsa or avocado sauce or whatever you want to call it dip and then a lovely little tomato salsa as well so everything we need to uh, everything we need to do is now done we can start to think about plating up which is always the exciting part isn't it it's always the exciting part so I have my salsa I have my avocado um, I'm also going to grab this here because here is some jackfruit that I prepared earlier so as you can see we have this wonderful pulled meat quality that has now come about when it comes to this jackfruit and um, it is really quite exceptional in that it may trick your mind into thinking you're eating pulled meat but you're actually eating plant-based food remember this is all vegan there is nothing in here that is not vegan it is sensational and all those flavors that we've stuck on it you know that cowboy spice the sticky sauce the apple all combines to create I want to show you guys create oh, oh, create really delicious looking meat but it's not meat because it's fruit all right so we're gonna plate up, and as I was saying, we're doing a Mexican style one, um, and which is definitely my favorite way to have it, because I love Mexican food so much. I love the flavors of Mex Mexican food. I love the combination of Mexican food. Everything about it excites me. So, why not make this into a Mexican style, like a nachos, or um, a filling for a taco, and I do the most incredible cauliflower um, taco shells which are once again just so good with this and I think that recipe is in it's actually in this book it's in the green book it's in this one it's in there it's in there so that I do I'll show you guys it's so good pretty sure it's in here I'm thinking about the picture I'm pretty sure it's in here <laughs> I remember photographing it for um for the book I just don't know where it is uh, it's definitely in here. Oh, here it is. Oh. Ooh. Cauliflower wraps. So you can actually make tacos or burritos with this and with, with this filling, which is good. These are cauliflower wraps. Here, that's in the green book. Yes, I remembered it was in there. Okay, but let's plate up. So we're gonna take. If you're just having it like with a side with a side salad, or on top of coleslaw, like a really nice, um, lovely light coleslaw with heaps of fresh herbs, mint and basil and and coriander. This would be so nice, right? This would be so good. So you put that down first. You got your jackfruit there. And then we think about adding all these wonderful, one, like seriously wonderful flavors to our jackfruit, even on its own, delicious. But this is gonna be good. All right, so we're gonna take that, that lovely avocado dip that we made, and that goes on top. Already you're like, yeah, I wanna eat that. Yep, yep, please. Please, Bridget, I want to eat that. That's what Mahay is saying right now. He's watching this going, that's my lunch, isn't it? Yes, my love, this is your lunch. The next thing we're going to add is that gorgeous salsa. So fresh, so simple, so wonderful. It gives us this lovely contrast of colors now. We're not just dark brown. We've got bright green. Now we've got bright red as well. And the flavor coming, the smell coming off that is just so good. But I'm gonna take it one step further for you guys because I love you lots. And for me, the one step further is I'm gonna take a little bit of coconut yogurt. Because you know, normally, when you eat Mexican food, you will get salsa, you will get chili. And don't forget, you can add chili to this if you want to, just be, um, be mindful that chili can inflame the gut. So if you're not used to chili, you might wanna just go lightly, but there's nothing stopping you from putting chili in here. There's nothing stopping you from putting chili in the jackfruit you can totally do that make it how you want but um, normally you'd get that salsa and that guacamole and you get some chili like a like a real like a salsa chili but you'd also get sour cream so as this is vegan and this is dairy free we're still gonna have that lovely texture from the creaminess but we are going to achieve that by using coconut yogurt instead so coconut yogurt gives us that wonderful like I said, creaminess of flavor and texture. It kind of, you kind of feel like you're a little bit spoiled when you're doing this as well, because it just tastes so wonderful. But that coconut cream is gonna give us that vision 
of it being also that sour cream. So that is phenomenal. Like that is so incredibly good. As I was saying before, I suggest if you've never tried jackfruit, give it a go. You will be pleasantly surprised at how you can create something that looks that good and it's completely plant-based and it's completely vegan and you can serve this to the kids you can serve this to your partner you can serve this to yourself of course and it just means we're not consuming as much meat and remember low in carbs really really low like zero sugar zero fat 40 calories a serve you can't go wrong and then you have the opportunity to add all these wonderful flavors to it and create your very own version on how you want to eat that it's just wonderful so that is the pulled pork aka vegan pulled pork aka pulled jackfruit uh, recipe of course is in um, the new ebook as well as 49 other amazing delicious exciting plant-based vegetarian and vegan recipes there are some egg um, you'll find through there a few of the recipes have egg a few of the recipes have i think i've also got just a very small amount of dairy but there's a dairy option so you can also do the vegan option if you don't want to do dairy those are in there too it is fabulous there is lots and lots of plant-based vegan and vegetarian book, uh, recipes in the green book as well so more from bridget com will get you the green book and Bridget's healthy veggies.com my hate will throw up the link again will get you the brand new just released here today <laughs> right now released e book which is all my plant-based vegetarian and vegan recipes exciting stuff exciting stuff ahead exciting for us because we're gonna have lunch now I know it's a hard it's such a hard thing to have to turn around and eat this it's hard all right guys thank you for joining me today I hope you've enjoyed today's um, today's class we will see you really soon with another class here in Bridget's Kitchen all right take care bye bye